So can, can we have this slide, please? So as I said, PFO closure under ICE guidance. Uh, next slide. So this is a 66 years old female who presented a cryptogenic stroke. It was October 31st, uh, so last October. Previous history of a permanent pacemaker for an idiopathic complete AV block. Uh, they rule out different disease, including sarcoidosis. Uh, there's no cardiovascular risk factor and no allergy. Next slide. She's on aspirin and statin since the stroke. She's also on pregabalin. Next slide. So this is a workup on her. The, uh, the ECG is showing a, a, a pacemaker rhythm. Uh, she had also a cardiostat uh, patch up two, that she wear for, for two weeks and they found no AFib. The transthoracic echo was uh, normal, but the transesophageal uh, echo revealed a malignant PFO that we will show to you. Next slide. So this is the, the PFO and you will see an injection from the arm. So first of all, you see pacemaker leads in the right cavities. Uh, you see also a large atrial septal aneurysm and you see also a large shunt, meaning more than 20 bubbles within three cardiac cycle. So this all features suggesting a very malignant PFO. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's clear that in her case, we think that the PFO is probably in really, uh, it's probably causal for the for the stroke. Next uh, slide. So as a, as a, as a as a discussion, I think we need to consider the fact: uh, should we close or not the PFO? We're typically considering the rope score in uh, the decision process, uh, and here just by the rope score. Uh, there's 68% chance that the PFO is uh, is the cause of the PFO uh, of the stroke, but it's even more given the fact that she has a pacemaker uh, with leads in the right cavities, and even more uh, 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 because she has a malignant feature. So the anatomy is very suggestive of a of a clear passage uh, through the PFO. We can discuss the strategy, uh, the occlusion strategy, but not for a long time. Transcatheter uh, is typically the default uh, uh, intervention for these patients. We can do that surgically, but there's typically no reason to do that. Uh, and we can discuss medical treatment before and after closure. She was referred on aspirin. Uh, you can potentially consider anticoagulant in her case, especially because she has a pacemaker and the, the, the PFO is very permissive. Uh, but it can be discussed. She came on aspirin, uh, and let's see what we give after the procedure. Uh, so in terms of procedural consideration, you can discuss the vascular access. Uh, so is it going to be echo guidance or not? For us, it's typically echo guidance for the vascular access always. Uh, we want to avoid the artery. Uh, or should we come from the leg, from the neck? It's certainly possible to go from the neck, but typically we are going almost always from the from the leg. Uh, we can discuss also the guidance, only fluoro guidance, uh, T guidance, or intracardiac echo guidance. And for intracardiac echo, we have the option of 2D, 3D, and 4D, uh, which is not necessary, and which is not absolutely needed in a case like this. And then we can discuss the choice of the device and what size. We have different options here on the shelf, the Amplaster Talisman or Septal Occluder from Abbott. We have also the Gore Septal Occluder from Gore and the Figula Flex 2 from Oclutec. And then we will discuss after probably the uh, medical treatment after the procedure. Next slide. So this is a procedural plan and we are going to start to work soon. Uh, so we will go from the right femoral vein uh, typically two puncture, uh, one for the echo, uh, because we will do an electrocardiac echo, and uh, the other one is going to be for the sheet for the, the, the device. We will give aparin the further puncture. We will do a right and left heart cat, but a quick one just to exclude significant pneumonia retention or significant increase of the filling pressure. Uh, I think we should always do that before to close a hole in the heart. Uh, so an intracardiac echo is going to be the view flex from Abbott. Uh, we'll put the stiff wire in the left upper pulmonary vein. We'll balloon size the PFO. Uh, we think that we can potentially stretch a lot this uh, defect. Uh, we will close uh, with potentially the Oculitech device. Uh, if it's appropriate, okay, it's always uh, depending on the sizing balloon and what we see inside. Uh, and then aspirin and Plavix for the first three months. 
and T at follow-up to, to control the occlusion. So next slide. So this is uh, what we're going to use in terms of ICE. This is the ViewFlex from Abbott with the ViewMate uh, console. Next uh, slide. We'll potentially use the Gore uh, septal occluder. Different sizes uh, are available, 20, 25, and 30. Uh, millimeter, uh, millimeter of diameter that we can deliver through a 12 uh, French access. Next slide. We can also consider the Amplaster Talisman PFO occluder coming in different size, 18, 25, 30, and 35. Uh, next slide. If it's the Amplaster, uh, uh, is going to be probably a large one, 30 or 35, because we want to deal well with the large aneurysm. Next slide. But the goal, the, the plan so far is to potentially go with the, uh, the um, Figula Flex 2 occluder from Oclutech. Uh, the device is not approved in the United States, but we will start soon head-to-head uh, -head comparison to compare this device with the other two, the Gore and the Amplatzer, uh, just to be, to be sure that it's non-inferior uh, in clinical trials. So let's uh, start maybe sure. uh, Marcel, we will show you the, uh, the access. Uh, so, as I said, it's going to be uh, eco guidance for uh, the access. We want to see well the vein, femoral vein is going to be two puncture. We will freeze well. Ça va piquer un peu, madame, désolé. So, you see well the uh, needle. We will freeze well the tissue. Thank you. Patient is very cogenic. We see well the vein that we can compress. We like in this institution often to do a puncture under uh, the guidance of the V scan from GE. Uh, but for the purpose of this uh, live case, we are using the, uh, the echo console that we will use for intracardiac echo after. But the image is quite nice. So, first puncture in the vein. This puncture number one, we see, we saw well the uh, needle under the echo probe. So we will put the first uh, wire in place, and you will see that we will not put the introducer yet. We'll just keep this wire to do more easily the second puncture. So this is puncture number one with the wire in place. We will go do a second puncture. See, we see well. Can you show uh, Marcel yeah, how sure. you be sure that you're on the right side with your probe? Yeah, well, actually, um, the, the easiest way I think is to, to just slightly compress on, on one side and just to make sure that's on the same side um, as I'm so compressing. So as he's touching the probe, see, on the left he, side, he yeah. can be sure that the vein is on the right side and the artery is on the right side. And obviously so. we all know the anatomy that the vein is in the inner, inner part of the, of the groin, the so groin, it should. Yeah. So by, by doing that, we are sure that the vein is exactly. inside and the artery is outside. Okay, cool. So second puncture now. Ça pince un peu, madame, m'excuse, on s'excuse, on désolé. Désolé, madame. Parfait. So, second wire in place, and as soon as we have two access, we will we will put the introducer in. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look uh, yeah, just, under maybe fluoro yeah, to just confirm to sure. that we are on the sure. right side with the wire. Okay. See, we are on the right side, so lots we of can wires go. in the heart. Yeah, and we'll have to make sure that we don't. Um, get entangled with the uh, pacemaker leads. Exactly. So here, when we, we need to be very careful that we won't, don't want to dislodge the, the pacemaker leads. So he's opening well the skin. We will um, introduce a seven French Middle. introducer just to pre-dilate well the track. And then we will do a first pre-closure with the per-close. Mm -hmm. ready, huh? ouais. Ok. On va la voir. <rire> okay. ok. Donc, 
introduce her in the first access. To pre-dilate and then per close, per close number one. Uh, we like to put the um, introducer for the ice, a, telf, a 10 French introducer uh, in, um, in the lower portion. Okay. So I'm removing now the wire. Mm. Sometimes there's it's not a lot of flow in the vein. Maybe the puncture is not that perpendicular. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm kinking inside. Okay. Yeah. Let Let's just see here on the on the so line. If there any doubt, we can potentially recuperate yeah. the vein and yeah. uh, potentially put the uh, introducer back and close at the end. Yeah. You want to close at the end? Maybe. Yeah, because I think the per close is not going. Okay. In. Let's go. Let's close at the end. Patient is very thin here. I uh, just maybe want to see how the how the um, if it's if see it's a plea. And Let's see the well. trajectory of the per close. It's fine. Yeah. Well, maybe I think we can we can we can pre-close it. Okay. Let's let's pre-close. Yeah. We just took a look uh, on fluoro to be sure that we are well aligned with the IVC. Perfect. So can you just stick this? Thank you. First per close in place. We will, um, with this access, we will put the 10 French introducer for the ice. We'll help you. Yeah, thank you. Got wire. Good. So 10 French introducer. I, I, like, I, I like longer introducer to be sure that we are well in the IVC. Uh, when it's too short, sometimes you can buckle when you try to go out from the introducer with your ice probe. Okay, nice lane. So this is uh, introducer number one, 10 French for the ice yeah. that we will flush. Let's do the second per close. That's good. Again, we are going to pre-dilate the access first. This is a seven French. Introducer. Okay. Let's pre-close it. Um. Tout va bien, madame, okay? Ça va vraiment bien jusqu'à date. Là, on n'a plus de piqûre, là. Ça va, va vraiment bien. T'es en train de s'installer dans l'aine. So, second pre-closure. Okay. So per close on the wire, I will remove the wire at this point. He will advance without wire in the vein. He's pushing on the belly just to confirm yeah. some venous return. There's not much, but we are at the end of the day. Uh, and patient is thin, so we have some blood return, confirming that we are in the vein. So he's deploying the needle, cutting the rope like this. It will close the feet and then remove just the device from the vein. Distribution. There's ready two to close suture that, that we will put aside. Yeah, just to try and make make clear which one is on either side. So just typically one on the left side, one on the right side, not to get them tangled. Okay, cool. And then now he's reintroducing the wire inside the vein and we'll put the second introducer in place. Perfect. So this is not the uh, final introducer. We will put uh, the one that is appropriate for the device eventually. So at this point, we can give the apron. As I said, it's typically uh, 100 unit per kilo. Uh, she's 50 kilo, so it's going to be 5,000 5, at apron. Thank mil. So let's now do a quick uh, right and left heart cat, just to be sure that there's no significant primary hypertension. 
or non-significant uh, increase of the filling pressure on the left side of the heart. As you know, the PFO can be um, can be a pop-up valve for too much pressure in the heart or in the lung. Let's make this a bit cleaner. Okay. All right. Let's go. So it's a multi-purpose, six French. Just put yeah. the. Typically, I like to start on the left side first. So from the IVC, when it, there's a significant PFO, typically when you put your multi-purpose like this in the IVC and you push your wire, typically it's not too difficult to, to cross the PFO. And I think it was the case here. Yeah, I think you were there for, See? for a split second. Yeah. There, there so this is now the, across the PFO. Can we get centered, please? Um... The wire is outside the heart, meaning that we are in the pulmonary vein. So I will remove the wire at this point. We will measure the pressure in the left atrium. So this is now the mean LA pressure. As I so, can you change this? On peut changer l'échelle, parfait. So the mean LA pressure is uh, is low. It's certainly lower than 12. Mm -hmm. So there's no significant heart failure on the left side. So mean LA pressure was eight. So yeah. let's go now on the Total on the right, right side, side in the RA. Let's make sure don't get caught with the wire with the leads. So we now in the uh, middle portion of the right atrium. Mean LA pressure is also low. It's typically uh, normally lower than five, and now it's four or three. And uh, let's go now in the right ventricle yeah, in the that's, primary that's artery. We will try. C'est peut-être sentir des petites palpitations, yeah. madame, hein, quand on va passer dans le cas. Des fois, on chatouille un peu, ça peut donner un peu de palpitations. Inquiétez-vous pas. That's where you have to be careful with, um, with so the leads. So here we have a pacemaker lead in the RV. So typically you need to follow yeah. the trajectory of the of the lead to go in the right ventricle. So that we are should, in the RV. Should be it. So if the R, the systolic RV pressure is normal, it typically means there is no primary hypertension and it's normal. Let's just wait for no extra systoles to be there. Yeah. That's better. So this is now the RV pressure. The RV pressure is normal, but let's go let's go uh, mm -hmm. in the pulmonary artery. So now pulmonary artery, mean LA Thank pressure uh, as we know typically should be lower than 20 and it's the case. So here, there's no evidence of uh, left heart failure, exactly. no evidence of primary hypertension. I think we can definitely close this uh, defect in the exactly. heart. Perfect. So let's go now with the ice, Marcel. Yeah. I'll just go back to the... Uh, yeah, let's go back to the yeah, IVC heart. with your catheter. Okay, just to spark it here for the time being. Yeah. Let's go with the ice. So this is the ice catheter that we will introduce. As I said, it's the... Um, I just want to show that. Can you uh, show my, my hands here and the catheter with the camera, maybe? Okay, cool. So this is the uh, eyes view from uh, Abbott. See, there's a, there's a handle here, uh, and you can, you can um, turn the tip of this catheter anteriorly, posteriorly, and uh, right, left. So by doing that, you can find your views within the herd. And there's a, there's, there's a line here that, that we can align to be sure that we are in the neutral position. So I'm neutral, we'll introduce that directly in the femoral vein without wire, <coughs> but we will follow that well. Ici, va falloir changer, va falloir, okay, cool. Now ice, yeah. Un peu plus en bas, s'il te plaît. Okay. And we will, we will, pas plus en bas. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, now we will connect the um, ice. So we are recuperating the same echo machine now for the ice. You see, while well, the tip of the ice. Just to make sure we don't enter in small veins at the slight resistance, always better to just come back and re advance. Now I'm yeah. advancing. We never want to force this. Exactly. And the black uh, part is the, uh, it's the, uh, where we do the imaging. Uh, but that, uh, if I zoom it out, zoom out here. So we want to start always with the own position and Marcel will show you what's the own position. It's typically something like that. In this view, uh, you see the right atrium, you see the tricuspid valve in front of you. You see also the right ventricle. Um, you have the aorta at three o'clock. And you see the uh, bulging here of this large septum, uh, and it's around 12, the septum. But it, it's, a, it's clearly a neurismal septum. You want also to, in this view, to take a look if there's any effusion around the mm -hmm. uh, right ventricle. We don't see well the tip of the right ventricle, but can you work on that? See, yeah, yeah. and zoom out, please. Um, zoom out more and more. Yeah, see, we, we just want to be sure in this view to see there's no effusion around the, the right ventricle, and I see nothing. Yeah. And, okay. it's, and it's typically in the mid, mid portion of the RCA. Yeah, so if you on fluoro, you see that we are in the right, in the mid, mid portion, portion of the right atrium. So yeah. Marcel will start to turn clockwise. Uh, by doing that, we should see more left ventricle, and this is the case. Yeah. See, you see well now the left ventricle. You see also well the mitral valve, the si the coronary sinus around nine o'clock, yeah. and you see the of course the left atrium. Can we zoom in now, just to make maybe make zoom sure. in? Yeah. Right. Just to focus on the on the septum. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Go. I think the likelihood of a recurrence, especially if the patient is not anticoagulated, is very high. I mean, it's a very malignant PFO. Uh, patient has a pacemaker pacemaker in the right cavities. There's always fibrin strain, uh, strain uh, uh, typically that we see on the on the pacemaker lead. So I think the likelihood likelihood of a recurrence is very high. I think I have no percentage to give, but absolutely high in this case. I think. I think we should close this PFO. I think it's uh, it's very malignant. Uh, now he will Marcel will potentially turn a yeah. bit more clock, and you need potentially to yeah. bring back a little posterior. You need to tilt the pro posteriorly exactly. to see better. There you go. The septum, and now by uh, we, doing that, uh, so he's tilting the probe posteriorly in the right atrium, and by doing that, we should see more the septum. That's is the case image. here. Yeah. So you see, well, the uh, atrial septum, there's two parts, a thin part that we call the septum primum, and there's a thicker part on the right side, roughly at one o'clock here, that we call the septum secundum, and the foramen is in between the two septum, so yeah. this is more a pathway. Uh, mm -hmm. a tunnel in between the two septum that we see here quite well. Yeah. Um, okay, the... We've got a question here. Yep. So, what is the likelihood of recurrent stroke uh, in the PFO? Uh, yeah. It was asked. It, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I answered this question. Yeah, I didn't hear it. It, it, said, it, was, yeah. it was an audio question yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, no more of them. Uh, maybe you could put some compressed moyer. Yeah, see. so uh, we will stabilize the ice uh, probe and then we will cross the PFO. You will see the wire under echo guidance. Okay. Goal is to go in. with the regular wire first in the left upper pulmonary vein, as explained in the beginning of the case.
So again, we want to be careful with the pacemaker lead that we don't want to um, dislodge. You see, I think uh, while well now that, the, that yeah. the wire is across yeah. the PFO, yeah, you nice saw that on echo. Yeah. yeah, it's very clear. Okay. That's so we will balance. follow this wire uh, with the multi-purpose catheter. We in the left upper pulmonary vein, so outside the heart. We, we will find a stable position, typically towards the superior part of the, the lung. And now we will put a stiff wire. We like to use here, the typically, the Amplatzer guide wire, but it's back order. So to, today we are going to use what we call an Amplatzer super stiff. Uh, I'm giving a, a small um, loop at the end, a small curve, just to be sure that we are not too aggressive in the lung. So it's a Boston Scientific Amplatzer super stiff wire that we are introducing in the left upper pulmonary vein gently, especially there at the go. end, removing the multi-purpose catheter. And next step, it's remove the introducer and to balloon yep. size this defect. I suspect that it's going to be quite large, but let's see. So to size this uh, defect, we are going to use a, a compliant balloon uh, here, and it's, um, it's 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 by Abbott. It was EGA before. So there's two markers separate by 15 millimeter. We are going to use that as a reference, uh, and this is very compliant, as I said. Different size. This one is 34 millimeter large, because we think again that we will stretch that well. Mm -hmm. It will go directly through the skin. We, uh, as we just said, the Marcel removed the introducer. Ça va pousser un peu, madame, okay? Yeah, that's going nicely in. Yep, so it's coming. As I said, so two markers separate by 15 millimeter, but also two more proximal markers separate by two millimeter. If the two proximal markers are separate, it means that you're well aligned with the defect. I'm starting to inflate within the defect. And I'm adjusting to just try and make uh, the most central part of the balloon where the defect is. Something like that. It does look large. It looks very large, I hear. Yeah. So at this point, it looks uh, it looks more like an ASD. Uh, typically, when we inflate the sizing balloon and it, it looks like a PFO, it's more, uh, we see more tunnel on on the on the uh, the balloon here i see more uh, 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 focal compression that she's measuring right now it's 19.6 yeah. so in my mind i think we should probably because it's we are stretching a lot this defect we should probably to consider to close with an asd occluder yeah. uh, typically a device to close atrial septal defect so with the middle to stand the defect inside. So I would probably go here with the yeah, nipple. So I will change the plan here. Uh, instead to close with a PFO occluder with two discs, one pin at in between, I will use a device, uh, uh, I will use a device to stent the defect. So a natural septal uh, uh, occluder. Uh, so I think the sizing balloon is 20. I would go probably with a 20 millimeter is the occluder. Huh? Right. Uh, with the uh, with the introducer. This. Okay. So let's do this. Yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be a better plan in yeah, this yeah, case. Sure. It's important to just um, take all the information that you can from all the um, all the parts of the procedure to just and it, improve it, your outcomes. Yeah, and I think it's uh, it's always plan A, plan B. Yeah, I you'll think be ready for everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think here here we're more in plan B. Yes. So uh, for if you follow the chart of the Amplaster septal occluder, the device that we select for this. Uh, Disclosure, uh, in theory, it goes in a nine French delivery sheet. I'm typically selecting a delivery sheet that it's uh, at least one French bigger 
than what they suggest on the chart to have more room inside. So in this case, going to be a 10 French delivery sheet. Yeah, great. Is there more question coming from the uh, audience or? See, we see uh, quite well the defect, large defect. Okay, on va prendre ça, s'il vous plaît. On va le montrer. Okay, perfect. I think it's a nice demonstration of. Yeah. So typically, after um, after closure, we we need to give at least one antiplatelet agent, and it's at least aspirin. And we often add a second one, which is often Plavix for three months. Three months, but it's mostly empiric, to be honest, to minimize the chance to have a clot on the device, but also to minimize the risk of migraine after a procedure. It was well proved after PF occlusion. If we give two antiplatelet agent, we have less migraine. And migraine are typically caused by platelets going on the device because uh, platelets are full of serotonin and when they release their serotonin, it can cause migraine. So typically three months of Plavix on top of aspirin, but it's optional to prevent migraine and to minimize the risk of uh, thrombus. And endocarditis prophylaxis uh, until again, the uh, endotization of the device to minimize the risk of infection before the fact that the virus is fully covered by the tissue of the patient. So now on the stiff wire, we are going to introduce the uh, delivery sheet. Okay. To deliver the amplaster septal occluder that we'll show to you soon. So we will remove at this point the stiff wire. I will remove also slowly the um, dilator just to be sure there's no air going inside. Let's see. And now we have a delivery sheet in place that we, we, we see well on echo, see on echo, mm. we see a, 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 a rail, so two line, and this is representing the delivery sheet for the device. So let's prepare now the sure. device. I will go here. Marcel, you will help me maybe. Yeah, uh, I'll try and make. Uh, do you see the table? Can you come with the camera, the camera on the table here? Okay, cool. One question, perfect. Okay. Amplaster septal occluder 20. Right, perfect. So this is a uh, uh, this is now the uh, Marcel peut-être just to mettre ici c'est yep. juste pour qu'il voit okay parfait ici comme ça parfait this is the um, loader for the device um, so we will recuperate the device inside this to put in the patient uh, je prends un trois voix s'il vous plaît um, voilà parfait une seringue on prend une seringue pour flusher so this is the loader for the device. We will introduce the cable. So it's going to be some oh, oui. the plastic. Sortira. So we will introduce the cable inside the loader. But let's see faster. Yeah. Okay. And this is uh, the device that we are going to put in place. Um, I don't know if you can zoom on this. Uh, so the plan now is to stent the defect. So to stent the defect, we will put what we call an implatzer septal occluder. Based on the sizing balloon, the middle portion of this, uh, of this uh, device is going to be 20 millimeter large. So this is the diameter in between the two discs. It's 20 millimeter large. And each disc, uh, the left one is 14 millimeter larger than the central uh, part, which is 34. 
and the right disc here on the right side of the heart will be 12 millimeter more, 10 millimeter more, uh, which is going to be 30, 30. millimeters. <laughs> Uh, so we need to fix this on the cable. I will put the device first in the water. Marcel will recuperate the device in the water and he will screw that on the cable. It's typically a counterclock rotation. And you should we need to be well aligned. Perfect. Perfect. Got it. Good, perfect. So now underwater, you will pull on the cable to introduce the device within the delivery, to introduce the loader. the loader. And at this point, it's very important to flush well, to remove all the air. So while I'm flushing, you will close the distal valve. And at this point, I will push strongly to evacuate all the the water, uh, the the air. On a petit moment, on string de 36. Ok, parfait. Ok, je vais prendre celle-là. C'est parfait. Ok, now I'm flushing well. We want to remove all the air. Uh, Marcel is also yeah. squeezing on the. Uh, Still some micro bubbles too. So there's still bubbles, so we can can just yeah. move the cable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That and now we work. are ready to go. Okay. Perfect. So there's no more air. We will go with the loader. Connect that to the distal catheter. Catheter is waiting for us in the left atrium. We will aspirate well the catheter because there's some stinging blood inside. So to be sure there's no thrombus within the uh, delivery catheter, we will aspirate. This is what Marcel is yep. doing right now. Yep. Do you want to yes. put this there? Okay, as always. Now uh, the... Um, Loader is connected to the flush. We want to connect the flush with the blood yeah. return. So it's flush against flush. flush. And advancing while flushing. While it's flushing, now Marcel is advancing the device. We should have a nice marker to know when to begin flowing. Yeah, so there's a, mar a nice marker here on the cable showing that where the device is going to be close to the, the tip, so you don't need to do fluoro before this marker is at the valve level. Okay. Just make sure the device is, is well attached. It just do a, a little traction to, to see that it, it doesn't detach itself, and we're ready to go. So at this point, we will typically advance until the edge of the, of the sheath that we know it's, it's well on the left atrium, and typically do a, an unsheath and sheath maneuver to expose the first um, part of the device. Maybe we can, yeah, we can show it with a, a nice image, maybe. This is the uh, I'm going to wait for you. This that can I offer. I think I yeah. lost my image. Uh, just a quick fluoro. Yeah, over there. There you go. See, this is, I think, the best that we can offer it, on It's sure going to be easier when once we deploy the first part of the device and we come, we come to the septum, we'll, we're going to have a nice image over there. Okay. Yeah. And she the left side. I think we should see well the left disc on fluoro, but also on echo. Oh. The goal in this case is going to stent the defect. So left side first, see while the left disc, it's open in the left atrium, see that well on fluoro and echo. Mm. Can you just uh, maybe unsheet a, a bit, bit more, more just yeah. to have a more flat disc? There. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then pull back this against the septum. Typically we feel a resistance. See, there, it's again it, the yeah. septum. And now you will unsheet the middle portion of the, the device and the right side. 
and just a nice pressure at the end to oppose it everything. And now is the time to see if we are well in between. The most important thing is to be sure that you're catching yeah. well both sides of the septum. Yeah. Drop the gain a bit, yeah, exactly. So we'll just minimize the gain. It's going to be less bright. We see that on the right side, we are capturing well the thick portion of the septum, which is the septum secundum. And on the left side, it seems to be also on both part of the thin septum, but it's more difficult to appreciate. Yeah. There you go. That's a nice image. I think so. You want to manipulate a bit yeah. the ice probe? This is the what we call the bicaval view. Sometimes we can try to go uh, short axis. So we typically it's a it's a quite protruding aorta. It's always getting that's in, that's another malignant feature exactly. to be honest of this defect. It, the, the aorta is dilate. And, it, and when the aorta is dilated, the septum is just under and it tends to stretch more the PFO. Yeah. But I think it's a nice image here yeah. uh, that you're showing, uh, Marcel. At this point, I think we can potentially test the stability of the sure. device. Uh, we, we will pull and push on this device to be sure that it's well attached. So we need to be far with the delivery yeah, sheet. Like that. I'm Marcel, going. you will pull. Yeah, he's pulling now. See, you see well, he's pulling well the right side of the device oh. and he will push to be sure the device is stable. Actually, it so, regains its position while, yeah, when quite I... quite well. So, yeah. And now we are AP, but we can go uh, LAO and typically cranial to profile well the septum. I will show you what, what we will see by doing this. We should probably align more the septum and see it's perfectly aligned now uh, you see that the left disc is is bigger and the right disc is smaller because we choose here natural septal uh, defect occluder mm -hmm. um, at this point i'm quite happy what we yeah. by what i see on echo and the fluoro i think we can consider to detach yeah sure okay um Typically, we have a pin that we I lost uh, on the floor. No yeah. problem. No. You will be able to detach. Yeah. I I always approach a bit with the sheath just to not have so much tension at the moment of the deployment. Something like that. I try to be in the same Can axis. You, yeah, you will exactly. turn the little sheet towards exactly. the device to minimize the. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then when you are in line, you will. Turn counterclock the cable to detach the device. Right. Okay. And now the device is released, nicely placed. It didn't move a bit. It, it, yeah. it was really stable. And can you see the, the uh, superior part of the septum, Marcel, is perfect. Can you potentially try to show the um, other part of the sure. septum? Let's try. Let's try. It's not easy in this case. Looks beautiful. See, and now we see the other part of the septum in between the two discs. Uh, that's a long fast view, kind of. Yeah. Good thing and we did not touch the uh, pacemaker lead. Yeah. Yeah, the aorta gets in the way. And it seems difficult and challenging to find a good short yeah, axis view. Half of it. Yeah, I'm too far. So come back yeah. and try to go under maybe the device to yeah. just to show the device from just, that's flexible. below. Yeah. Yes, just give us just two seconds and we'll be happy to answer the questions. It's almost finished here. We just need to ah. finish at the end. So now it, it we are seeing all the pacemaker lead in the ventricle. Can you potentially f yeah, flip, flip towards it. the ventricle? And just, yeah, I can Seems one manage. Difficult. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay. I'm happy to answer your yeah. questions. Do you have any question?
Oui, on entend. Quel... Oui. So the rationale of, um, of uh, aspirin, typically, when you have a stroke, typically you need to give to take aspirin. Often it's uh, it's for a long time, uh, sometimes forever. But if you have a device, you need to take to take aspirin at least six months. So after this procedure, it's at least six months of aspirin for the device, and the, after it's the it's based on the indication for stroke prevention. So. Most of the neurologists that I'm working with, they tend to continue the aspirin forever, but it's optional. I know that in some center, they stop eventually the aspirin after the closure at six months. Uh, Plavix is typically three months to minimize the, the amount of migraine, minimize the risk of thrombus on the device. And endocarditis prophylaxis, it's uh, six months typically to prevent infection coming from the mouth in the first six months before the underutilization of the device. Uh, and uh, Geneviève, I think you were asking another question. Uh, yes, so how will the information from the imaging, TEE at three months, post-surgery imaging, affect the treatment of the patient's management thereafter? So the question is about um, uh, the TE at three months, how the TE at three months will influence the, uh, strat the, 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 the treatment of this patient. So we like to do a TE at three months to confirm that the ceiling is good. There's no residual shunt uh, because typically most of the interiorization is finished at three months. So it's why we typically do at three months a TE. And if there's any residual shunt, we can consider either to go back to, to close more or to keep the patient on anticoagulant if the patient was anticoagulant, for example. So it's we want to confirm at three months typically complete occlusion. Uh, at the end of the procedure, we typically like to do a fluoro to see the device under uh, on AP view. Uh, this image will be compared with the chest x-ray of the patient. Uh, typically, patients they leave uh, the hospital same day um, with a chest x-ray before discharge to be sure the device is still well in place. And we compare typically the chest x-ray with what we see at the end of procedure here in the AP, uh, AP view. I think this case highlights how important it is the procedural planning and reviewing the, the images and all the malignant features of this particular anatomy. We mm -hmm. were ready to use the eyes because we knew that uh, it would be important to fully ascertain that we got all the defect with the device, but then also how we we chose to adapt with the information that we got today, with the, specifically with the sizing balloon and the, and the, and the size of the defect. In my experience, the uh, very anerismal uh, septum like this one can be very challenging because mm -hmm. uh, if you put a device, especially if, if the device with only two discs, like a PF occluder, uh, it tends to not be stable. Uh, but by putting a device like this, what we call a atrial septal occluder, if you stent middle portion of the septum, the device tends to be more stable. stable. Yeah. And this is exactly what we saw today. Despite it's a PFO, we choose to close with an, uh, a, a septal occluder, a device designed to close atrial septal defect. So all in the heart instead of a, of a, of a, of a tunnel. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, I think TE, I think we, we got decent image today. Yeah. Uh, it was not perfect for us, probably because the aorta yep. was dilated. For sure. Uh, because the septum was very aneurysmal. Uh, I think we demonstrate well that it's doable to close under uh, under ice. Yeah. Uh, by doing that, uh, the advantage is you're, you're, you're preventing a general anesthesia, preventing a transesophageal echo. And patient will leave soon, uh, so tonight uh, by doing that uh, under local anesthesia under ice guidance. So, I think not perfect result, uh, not perfect image, but very decent image, uh, uh, good enough to close safely uh, the defect uh, with confidence. Do you have other uh, comments uh, about the, the, the procedure? We we did the per close at the beginning that we will just yeah. 
close, uh, we can potentially show that, Marcel. Sure. Um, so at this point, yeah, uh, we can just remove the ice probe. We are confident that we have a good result. Um, Let's take the upper the one first. The suture are already in place. So we just need to pull on the suture. There's a long... Yeah, so there's a, a long shoot suture and one shorter with a with a white marker on it. So you typically pull from the long one uh, while you advance the the knot that's already preformed down to the to the vessel wall, and you only pull from the short one when you are sure that you are opposed to the vessel to close the knot. I will pull on the uh, delivery sheet. Yeah. He's going to push on the. Bougez pas, madame. Bougez pas. On the knot. He's having the knot pusher in place. And then I, when I'm confident, I just close okay. the knot. So now you will pull on the other one to lock the knot. So the first suture is finished. It's closed in lock. We will... Nice and most Yes. Yeah, there's no bleeding at all. And now we will remove the other catheter. A second. We have the pusher, please. Okay. Ça okay. va tirer un peu, Madame Dalen. Okay, ça va tirer un peu. On s'excuse. On fait juste des petits points de suture. And then he will slide his knot. If it's still bleeding from the skin, we like to give some xylo avec, uh, with uh, epinephrine, and sometimes we do a small suture on the skin. Today I think was, in this uh, case, I think it's not going to be needed. That's the slight oozing on the lower one. Can you show uh, maybe a uh, muscle? Yeah, there's a bit of oozing on the left one, but nothing that the, maybe it's just um, So on a this one, on we will potentially put Xilo with EP and do a small suture on the skin. Yeah. See, the one axis is not bleeding at all. The other one is a small oozing coming more from the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, but take Xilo with EP, please, and a small suture. Yeah. And I think it's going to be uh, it. Uh, unless we have other questions, I think it's going to be uh, the end uh, of this case. Any other comments? Any more questions? from the audience. All right, so there's no more questions. So um, thank you for everybody. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your visit uh, uh, the Montreal Heart Institute today. Thank you, see you next time.